Hey, I'd like to take a really complex subject, and to me it's not actually that complex, and simplify it such that everybody's able to understand it in a very simple way. And it's about original Buddhism. If you don't uh, know me at all, not seeing my videos, I've been translating ancient Pali texts now for over 20 years. I can actually say then I'm a consummate expert on original Buddhism and lacking a time machine, the oldest text that we have, and the only pre-sectarian corpus of Buddhism is the Nikayas, uh, specifically Dega Nikaya, Majima Nikaya, Anguttara Nikaya, Kodaku Nikaya, Samyutta Nikaya. So these are pre-sectarian. In other words, long before sex came uh, around later, vis-a-vis -vis the Sarawasti Wadins, who later became the Theravadins, the Mahayana, so on and so forth. I myself am only interested in the original article. It is a case of human nature that people cling and cleave to, even if it's uh, intellectually subliminally, to something that is original. They don't like uh, being in the shadow of something else. Uh, like a kind of neat example of that are these two identical twin sisters, and uh, they're both completely identical. They both kind of wore the same clothes for decades and decades. And uh, one always felt like she was in the shadow of the other, so that the sister um, actually, uh, I think she drove her other sister off the cliff. And of course, you know, she did, she just couldn't stand being in the shadow. And uh, specifically belief systems are like this too. The notion that something is not new or original. Um, no one would harbor, you know, an unrealistic, maybe there's some people out there that uh, Martin Luther, who uh, did the Reformation uh, in Germany, the notion that uh, Martin Luther, you know, somehow uh, was against Christianity is completely ludicrous. But if we fast forward, say, 2,000 years down the road, some future, you know, uh, ignorant historian might say, well, you know, Lutheranism was uh, completely new and novel. It was not, uh, you know, Christian at all, which, of course, is completely ludicrous. Um, original Buddhism vis-a-vis -vis 2,500, uh, 2,5002,600 years ago was not anything new. Even at that time, uh, Vedanta had already become incredibly corrupted. Now, to make something very simple, uh, slightly more complex, I can make uh, you know a long video stating the fact that Buddhism is nothing other than a neo-sramanic movement to reestablish uh, the methodology of liberation of uh, of uh, Vedanta vis-a-vis -vis the uh, the earliest Upanishads and uh, the principles of uh, the liberation ontology of moksha or vimutta, i.e. liberation. But we don't need to make it uh, complicated. Buddhism is nothing new whatsoever. There is nothing of anybody that's actually studied original Buddhism that you could say that it is something new or novel or it sprang you know, uh, in new grounds as a completely different species. It's completely ludicrous. Not only are we talking about the same lingua franca, but the exact same uh, teachings of liberation vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, via negativa. And we don't need to talk about the actual doctrine of uh, liberation, but there is nothing within Buddhism, original Buddhism, I need to stress, original Buddhism that is anyhow, in any way, shape or form, different, apart from, opposed to, novel in any way, shape, or form um, to the teachings within like the Briyadranika Upanishad, Kata Upanishad, so on and so forth. It is not anything new. And uh, all the experts uh, throughout the uh, the ages, like Dr. Anandikichish Komaraswami, um, Salvapriyo Radhakrishnan, uh, Hajimi Nakamura, on and on and on and on. People that are actually not uh, part of any sort of a religious of movement or anything like that that actually have studied Buddhism as it exists within its own doctrine have and of course these people are dead they can't tell you now but they've written about it extensively and they're completely right as perennialists Buddhism was not new or novel or against you know the the actual teaching they just become completely corrupted just as Martin Luther was not in any way, shape, or form, obviously so, to us people and Martin Luther, is not that long ago. Um, it's, uh, um, 
I mean, talking about a short period of time since Martin Luther passed away to where we are today, we would never harbor this notion that Martin Luther was in any way, shape, or form against anything within the Bible or anything against Christianity. Martin Luther protests, and everybody should see the movie Luther. I mean, there is a little bit of fiction in there, but it's essentially accurate. It's a movie called Luther. It is a really, really a brilliant uh, movie. But I'm not a supporter of Martin Luther, by the way. He actually has said a lot of stuff that I completely don't agree with, and I'm just using him as an example. Luther protested against the pomp and ritual and uh, the indulgences of the Catholic Church. Everything that was completely unoriginal to uh, Christianity, for example, that Catholicism had embraced, the rituals, uh, the indulgences, the fact that you could buy your way out of hell by dropping a couple coins in a box, on and on and on. They're the things that uh, Martin Luther protested against the Catholic Church. No halfway intelligent person would think, well, this is this is something against Christianity. Martin Luther established a new religion. Well, that's completely ludicrous. And yet, nearly 100% of the world that talks about Buddhism thinks that Buddhism was somehow uh, um, against uh, the Sanatna Dharma, it was against uh, principles such as Tattva Masi or Hambra Masmi or uh, Via Negativa Liberation Ontology. And this is not the case at all. Buddhism is in no way, shape, or form original at all. Absolutely. Nothing is known except through the modality of the knower. Absolutely nothing. The Via Negativa is the same. Uh, the liberation is the same through the removal of primordial agnosis. Buddhism in no way, shape, or form fundamentally different is from Advaita Vedanta, which of course came a little bit later. But 2,500 years ago, we'd already had what we would call a Catholic church, a ritual pomp and circumstance, and just nonsense that was not directly conducive to emancipation through wisdom. And so the original Gautama is no different than Martin Luther rebelling against ritualistic nonsense and indulgences. It's a nearly identical parallel, and uh, all religions, of course, and I have no interest in religions whatsoever, are like this. And 99% uh, of Buddhists want to think, oh, Buddhism is original, it's, it's autonomous, it's this self-contained entity, you know, like it's sprung out of a vacuum. And that's absolutely ludicrous. There is nothing within the doctrine of the Diganike, Majima, Samyuranike, Nguttaranike, Kudakunike, Udana, Irivutaka, so on and so forth, the original pre-sectarian text, it is in any way, shape, or form opposed to Priyadranika Upanishad, the principles of liberation vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, the Vedas. Absolutely no way, shape, or form. Absolutely not. Buddhism in no way, shape, or form ever denied the soul this is completely ludicrous. It has no doctrinal basis, no substantiation whatsoever. It's completely asinine. And I tell you that as someone's been translating Pali now for over 20 years. There is no basis where in which and by which one could make such an absurd claim because all religious debates are sola scriptura, which means when we say something regarding Buddhism, we must back it up with uh, both uh, citations from doctrine, but also, too, at the very least, you know, logical substantiation. The notion of liberation without a liberant is ridiculous. I mean, it's completely ludicrous. And none of these things are doctrinally substantiated. So Buddhism is not opposed to Hinduism. There's no such thing as Hinduism. It refers to a people, Hinduism. Any, you know, any Indian will tell you that. There's no such thing as a Hindu religion. It's ridiculous. And uh, But you'll find stuff like that in the... Uh, in the Encyclopedia Britannica, Wikipedia, on and on. Buddhism was against Hinduism, which taught that there was an un permanent, unchanging self and soul. Ludicrous. There is no denial of the soul within Buddhism. It's completely asinine. There's no doctrinal substantiation for this. I know all 556 occurrences of the Turamanada. It is never used in a pejorative fashion. A, B, C, X, Y, Z are not the Atman. Rupa nata veda nata sankara nata vinya nata nam rupa anatati isakaya namisata. You know, the refutation of ABC XYZ is not being the soul, is not a denial of the soul. There's no uh, signal inside the radio, but that's not a denial of the signal. It's saying there's no signal in the radio. The signal is consubstantial or tuned vis a vis the radio, but there's no signal in the radio. There's no uh, little people inside the TV set. There's no soul in the body, but that's not a denial of the soul either. 
Saying that it is in there means it's located there, meaning some sort of substantial entity, which of course is completely ludicrous and a-philosophical and highly unintelligent. So anyway, getting to the point, the notion that Buddhism is uh, original in any way, shape, or form has no doctrinal substantiation whatsoever. It is completely absurd, and yet there are all these YouTube channels and Wikipedia, on and on, they say the exact same thing. Buddhism is completely opposed to the Hindu notion of the Atman. There is no such passage. None whatsoever. Absolutely none. Anyway, thanks for watching. I probably could have made this video a little bit shorter, but I could talk about this subject endlessly. Goodbye.